Hi, I'm Carl with I Squared R Power. And uh, today we're beginning a multi-part series on electromagnetic stirring devices. Today we're beginning a mini series on uh, caster stirs. We will subsequently get into ladle stirring as well, but uh, we're gonna have a multi-part series uh, geared towards electromagnetic stirring. And as we all know, electromagnetic stirring is used both at the LMF as well as at the caster to extract desired metallurgical properties. This is typically what a caster stir or a mold stir looks like when it comes to us from a customer. Uh, we, uh, we conduct several uh, electrical tests just to benchmark where the unit's at before we begin disassembling any of the device or trying to uh, determine exactly what the root cause of the failure was. We have partially disassembled uh, two different caster stirs here just so you could see what the insides look like and uh, we could highlight a couple of the differences between the two. Stator assembly right here came out of this weldment, okay? And you can see that with this design, I can pull the whole stator assembly out of the weldment. With this design here, we have the stator assembly is permanently attached to the weldment, as are all the core laminations and the individual coils get mounted inside. Aside from the obvious physical differences between these two caster stirs, they also employ different uh, magnet wire or conductor. This unit here has a flat shaped conductor that employs a uh, double day glass dielectric insulation system. And this one is employing a, uh, a round shaped conductor with a Kapton coated uh, dielectric insulation system on top of it. The basic uh, functionality of these caster stirs is uh, similar to a, an electric motor. And the magnet wire that they're using is oftentimes used in building electric motors. The big difference though, is that these coils are operating in a submerged state, whereas an electric motor is not underwater. These coils are always underwater when they're in operation. And that is uh, basically to wick the heat away from those coils uh, because there's a large, uh, a very hot steel bloom or billet passing through them. And so we have to keep the coils cool, not only from the, uh, from the billet, but also from their own uh, operation. So once we've concluded the electric tests that, uh, that we administered to uh, establish a baseline for each individual caster stir, we can also begin to methodically disassemble the unit. And we photo document these things along the way so that we can share those with the customer and he can see what has uh, actually caused the failure within his caster stir, which is particularly helpful if he's not able to visit us. In this case, you can see that there, there was some turn-to-turn -turn arcing in one of the coil packs that uh, eventually uh, led to the failure of this particular caster stir. Again, here at I-squared R Power, we are completely independent. This allows us the ability to see a, a variety of OEM designs out there. And uh, it allows us to assess what is successful and what is not. If there's anything that uh, piqued your interest here today, please give us a call. So stay tuned for chapter two in electromagnetic stirring devices. Thank you.